it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's only human to look into a little bit of enlargement now and then. And today we're going to be looking in, into that. Get your mind out of the gutter. The sketch graph. Enlarging your drawings since no, where, where was this? Doesn't have a year. Since since the other day when I bought this from from the shop before everything went on shutdown. Now I'm making videos with everything on my shelves, including this thing. I do thoroughly enjoy trying out drawing gadgets and gimmicks. And I say gimmicks because let's face it, most of the gadgets I try are not very good. It looks like wilted spinach. You think you drew that? He didn't draw that. You're a liar, kid. I've ruined my beautiful leather desk. I, I am happy. I am glad. I don't regret. Get my magic. We don't talk about those times. Now the sketchograph claims to be able to enlarge or reduce, depending on your desires, your illustrations or to replicate them at a one-to-one -one scale. So let's check this out. We're going to try a bit of enlargement, a bit of reduction and a bit of replication. We're going to see how accurate it is. Most importantly, how fun it is, because it's probably not going to be accurate. It's probably going to be really bad. It certainly feels cheap. <laughs> I think I got this for seven bucks at the local toy shop. Ooh. 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 This is like one of those cool like reachy things. I always wondered if I could like make art with those. You know, they're like the, the and you. Ooh, did I break it? Sorry, I'll just look at the uh there's no instructions. <laughs> Thank god. Oh wait, there's let a B A C B A B C Therefore this connects here. Ah, uh, now we're in business. Alright, wait a did it, it keeps falling apart. Ah, it's because you can change sizes. So you can put it in that hole, or you can put it in that hole. I have a feeling this is going to be moving stuff around, so I'm going to have to tape my paper down. You'll be happy, you'll be glad. Light it up with magic power. It's back in my head now, god damn. I wonder what the jingle for this thing would be. If you're having a draw and you feel like a laugh, come on and get a sketchograph. Okay, we got, we're taped, we're taped down. Good, it's not going anywhere. Let's give this baby a go. Why does it keep falling apart? Will enlarge or reduce or reproduce original size images from maps, pictures, plans, photographs, etc. Now, if you're reproducing maps, or plans, you need accuracy. I mean, look at that. Reproduce the original size of the Australian map. The Australian map, I mean, look at all the edges of that map. Look at that. And the, the height, the altitude. It's all about detail. If you get something wrong by millimeters, you've misrepresented the bloody country. You can't be doing that. So my expectations are extremely high. So let's start off with uh, <laughs> a little bit of enlargement. This is a picture I've prepared earlier. This is actually, uh, by the way, from my coloring book, which you can download. The link's in the description. It's just a couple of bucks and there's dozens of images there that I've created over years on this channel for you to color in and print out during this uh, isolation period. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put on a bloody discount. 10% off because I love you and because it's only a couple of bucks anyway. So, and to enlarge, there's a needle. Oh, here it is. See that? See this? There's your needle. I'm gonna put this down here, and then I need a pen. There's that. No, does it fit? Oh, make it fit! Hashtag enlargement problems. Am I right? Get your mind out of the gutter. It keeps falling apart. How do I stop you from falling apart? Gaffer tape. Gaffer tape fixes everything, except it's not gonna to attach to the. Doesn't fix it. Unless it just, if it, I guess if it holds it against it, could work. Why can't anybody innovate with drawing gimmicks in a reliable way? As it, they, okay, all right. Hoo, ha ha, yeah. Wait, it does lock. It's in upside down. <laughs> oh, hey, that feels much more solid because we have two points of support. There's a pin here and then there's a pin here which represents our drawing pin. So the idea is then that I could draw like that, except it's not reaching far enough. Okay, let's move this thing across. It's gotta be closer to our final drawing position. Now the question is, is this too ambitious as far as enlargement size goes? I mean, should I be looking more at something like that size? Yeah, this, this actually uh, looks a bit more fitting. I'll see if I can go from this to this and then from this to this. Who knows? First things first, I think we've got to find the position of our anchor point to be as uh, beneficial as possible. Meaning we don't want the top to go too far off the top. It's a bit awkward because I can't draw the nearest bit of... Alright, got to move the paper over. There's a bit of fine tuning involved. Ooh, turns out enlargement is a bit more complicated than those ads make it. So that feels like a pretty good 
place. All right, let's give this a go. I'm gonna work my way from left to right. Oh yeah. I feel like you need, you guys need a, a clearer view of what I'm doing here, because it's quite interesting. It is following along one to one. I'll set up another camera, give me a sec. All right, now you've got an extra close up view so you can see what's going on. There's this needle down here that I'm tracing and I am controlling it with the pen. And now I'm just like drawing, only watching where the needle is going. I haven't looked at what I've drawn yet, but it shouldn't touch the line. Oh, okay. You yeah, know, it's a little shaky. Let's see how it looks with the, uh, the whole image. Maybe it'll, it'll look a bit nicer. And I gotta say, it's sort of a reasonably fun process. And I gotta say, if I was doing cartography, which I think is the technical term for the map drawing stuff, this isn't too bad. It's a little wobbly, but that's only because I'm a little wobbly. I feel like if I was like pinpoint accurate, it could be accurate. Uh, I mean, I say that and then I look across and... It's, it's patchy. I guess the problem is I'm so focused on looking at what I'm copying that I, uh, I don't really pay enough attention to what I'm drawing. And then when I have bits like that, because I'm so focused, I'm like not controlling the, the pen in my hand. I'm just focusing on what I'm, I'm trying to trace. I feel like it, sh it might be less accurate the further out I'm getting, but I don't know if that's just my imagination. It might be that the needle I'm controlling here is feeling more wobbly. Like when I'm in here, I'm not pulling as much weight around, but when I'm out here, it's a lot more draggy and there's a lot more distance for the accuracy to sort of fizzle out in, probably for reasons like physics and science and stuff. All right, so now we're doing the eyeball. Pretty important part of the picture. Positioned exactly to scale. That's pretty cool. I gotta say, you're impressing me. What's it called again? You're impressing me, Sketchograph. Oh, how far can I reach? I'm reaching the end of it. And it's certainly feeling like a strain on accuracy <laughs> to be right at the end of where this thing could go. Whoa, long line. Wobbly one too. It's a real mixed bag, I've got to say. I mean, if I did this in pencil, I'd have a really solid, like, replication here. I mean, that's, that's impressively solid as far as an enlargement goes. It's a little difficult to control, but like I was saying, if I used a pencil, I'd be able to get the bulk of it down and then I'd be able to come back with ink later. In fact, I might do that. So I've got the bulk of it down, as you can see, but there's gonna be a bit of cleanup to make this look decent. However, the original image, as you can see, has quite thick line work, especially around the edges. And then there's all these little details in the middle here, but I would be stupid to follow that along with this whole needle contraption thing. That would be much better done freehand. So I think this tool has served its purpose for this enlargement. I'll finish this off with a little bit of uh, brush work and detail work, just eyeballing it, and then we'll have a look. people. I was so ready to just muck around and mock this thing because I expected it to not really be useful or, or work. But you can't argue with the results. It's crazy. This like cheap bit of plastic just enabled me to do that. Now obviously I took over towards the end but the fact that it, it's it's a one-to-one -one replication which was laid down as a foundation with this simple tool is so cool. Now I have a feeling that I'm not going to be able to really go bigger than that because I mean there's only so far this thing can reach and it has to span the whole page of the drawing. So this is the maximum size for a sketchograph of this size. But it's a really simple mechanism. It has me thinking I could probably make sketchographs of various sizes and just do a biggie biggie challenge. You know, like a teeny weeny challenge? What do you call it? You wouldn't call it a biggie biggie challenge. An enlargement challenge? I don't know, but the point is it works. So we've done the maximize. Let's do the minimize. This time I've got uh, this simple little illustration here, which will look more detailed when it's shrunk. This is my uh, weasel cop from a character design session on the on the channel. Again, part of the coloring book. So go check that out if you like the illustrations and, and you like uh, having some, some drawings to do activities like this with or color in with. Now we are gonna half this size. Oh, and I've got to swap the needle out. So this time the needle's on the outside and the pen's gonna go 
in the middle. Take the drawing down, take down our sketchy graph. And then we've got to figure out how to uh, how to do the shrinking thing effectively. Like, do I hold the pen to organically draw? It, oh, it's going to require a little more finesse. Or do I hold here? I'm going to hold this needle. I feel like it's going to be more accurate. But there is weight in the pen, meaning it's going to touch the page before my needle goes down. So I might need to use both hands. I'm a little nervous. I feel like the stakes are raised. <laughs> All right, so I'm finding if I just turn my finger and thumb across this way, it like twists it so I can move the pen up and down a little bit. I'm sort of lifting and putting the pen down from the needle side of this weird contraption. I'm nervous about the details of this because obviously it's all going to be very fine in the middle bits and in the detail bits. But I'm just trying to replicate it one to one and see how it turns out. All right, I gotta say the uh, the process is a lot more uncomfortable because I've got a very tight grip with just like the tips of my fingers. I might take over drawing with the pen. Oh no, you see it moves around even before I touch the page. Oh yeah, no, that's infinitely more difficult. It's less consistently placed if I'm holding the pen. So at least if I'm holding this needle, there's nothing sort of pulling or pushing the pen around other than this mechanism. And there we have it. My weasel cop shrunk. I mean, it's not amazing. It doesn't give the same impression or impact as, you know, this. It's pretty gross in comparison. <laughs> Just copying that with my eye it would have looked better. And there are way more practical ways to do this better quality, of course, too. For example, a lot of people own an A4 scanner, which are also often combined with printers. You could just scan it, shrink it, and print it. But not a lot of people own an A3 photocopier or scanner or printer. So there's actually some practicality to the, the enlargement thing. I guess the only thing left, which we haven't tried yet, is the replication. And the idea for this one is pretty much the same, except that it's going to draw what I'm replicating upside down. But I feel like there might be a, a practical use for this too. Ready? Check this out. You see, uh, this is an important document. And at the bottom here, we have a uh, signature. And over here, we have a uh, <laughs> nefarious alteration. See where I'm going with this? Make up your own document of your own choosing, nick someone else's document and just trace, and it's a foolproof way to create a forgery. Well, not a convincing forgery. Thank God that didn't work, because otherwise I would have legitimately just taught hundreds of thousands of people how to forge documents. And that's not what this channel is about, really. What this channel is about is having fun with art and creativity, and whether it's effective or not. Well, I had fun today and this was a surprisingly cool little gadget. I did not expect a super practical outcome. I was hoping to try and make it work even if it was silly or bad, but it, that that worked and that's cool. So credit where credit is due. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me make some various size versions of this and, and do a do a a big challenge. Like the teeny weeny challenge, do the biggie biggie challenge, but come up with a better name for it than I've come up with. <laughs> also, of course, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Press like, I think it's down there, and then subscribe, which is down there, to, oh no, I broke it again. Anyway, point is, hit like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't, because we have a lot of fun with art and creativity, and occasionally some fun gadgets and tech. Let me know in the comments what you want me to try out, or review, or make in a future video. Otherwise, there are more videos over there for you to enjoy. That is it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later.